In this lecture, we will cover the maximum profit or loss of a put option for both the buyer and the seller. As with any trade, it is important to be aware of the risk you're taking before placing the trade. Firstly, this table shows how to calculate the profit or loss of a put option position for either the buyer or the seller. For now, to keep things simple, we've left out the position size, i.e. the contract multiplier and the number of contracts. What we are doing here to calculate the profit or loss is calculating the value of the put option at expiry, then adjusting for the premium to give the final profit or loss. The value of a put option that expires in the money is the strike price minus the underlying price at expiry. So we could write that as put value equals strike minus price. To calculate the buyer's profit or loss, we then just need to subtract the premium they paid from the value of their put option at expiry. This leads to us calculating the put buyer's PL as put value minus premium. As we just covered, when the put option expires in the money, the put value is strike minus price. So we can write the PL as strike minus price minus premium. So you can see how the formula for the buyer's PL is derived. The seller's PL is, of course, just the negative of this, i.e., multiplied by minus 1. So the seller's PL can be calculated as premium minus put value, which equals the premium minus strike minus price, or the premium plus price minus strike. So you can see how the formula for the seller's PL is also derived. When the put option has no value at expiry, because the price expires above the strike price, you can substitute in zero for the put value to give the put buyer's PL as put value minus premium, or zero minus premium, or just minus premium. And the put seller's PL is the premium minus the put value, or just the premium. As a quick PL example, Assume a trader buys a put option with a strike price of $40 and pays a premium of $5 per share. What is the profit or loss for the buyer and seller if the price at expiry is $25? We have a price of $25, strike of $40, premium of $5. As the price at expiry of $25 is below the strike price of $40, the put has some value at expiry so we will use the bottom row of formulas. The buyer of the put option has a profit or loss of strike minus price minus premium, or 40 minus 25 minus 5, which equals $10. So the put option buyer has a profit of $10 per share. The seller of the put option has a profit or loss of premium plus price minus strike, or 5 plus 25 minus 40 or minus $10. So the seller of the put option has a loss of $10 per share. As you can see, the seller's loss equals the buyer's profit. As well as just being able to calculate the profit or loss for a specific value, it's also useful to know the maximum profit or loss of any option position you're thinking of opening. You can see these values in this table. For example, if we use the previous example with a price of $25, strike of $40, premium of $5, the maximum profit for the buyer is $35. This is calculated as strike minus premium, or 40 minus 5, which equals 35. The maximum loss for the seller is of course also 35, calculated in the same way. For the put option buyer, their profit continues to increase for every dollar decrease in the underlying price. Remember, the put option buyer's profit is calculated as strike minus price minus premium. So if we assume a minimum price of zero dollars, this means their maximum profit is limited to strike minus premium. When the put option buyer has their maximum profit, the put option seller has their maximum loss of the same amount. The put option buyer suffers their maximum loss when the underlying price at expiry is above the strike price, rendering the put option worthless. When this is the case, they lose the premium they paid for the option, but nothing more. 
Similarly, for the put option seller, they make their maximum profit when the underlying price at expiry is above the strike price of the put option. The seller gets to keep the premium they collected and does not have to pay anything out. Their maximum profit is equal to the premium collected. It's worth noting that it is extremely rare, but it is technically possible for an asset price to become negative, which could increase the put option buyer's profit and increase a put option seller's loss past the maximum we've listed here. This can happen for physically settled contracts for assets that cost a lot to take delivery of and store. For example, this happened in April 2020 with a WTI oil contract. With the COVID crisis greatly decreasing demand for oil, oil storage facilities were running very low on storage capacity. Due to this, many people who were left holding the physically settled contract coming into expiry did not want to take physical delivery of the oil, and so were even willing to pay other parties up to $37.63 a barrel to take the contracts off their hands. A quick Google search will give you more details on this event if you want to study it further. In summary, the buyer of a put option has a fixed risk, and a profit that is only limited by the underlying price reaching zero. The seller of a put option has a risk only limited by the underlying price reaching zero and a fixed maximum profit. Whether trading call options or put options, or a combination of both, it is always wise to be aware of where your risk lies. It is also important to be aware of the potential magnitude of that risk in a worst case scenario i.e. your maximum loss.